Hi, Jim Hudson here. Let's talk about the operation of the Auto 34R tire changer. Right out of the gate, I got a super ergonomic wheel lift that'll pick this wheel up and place it right over the platen. The only thing I need to do is make sure that I line the, one of the lug holes up with the traction pin. Got a quick clamp here that if you get of a quarter turn and clockwise, quarter turn down and, uh, and clockwise, it locks it into place. Now what I like to do is typically just give the wheel a little bit of a shake to kind of help center it and tighten it all at the same time. I'm ready to go and break my beads. Now the thing that's unique about the Auto 34R is the fact that the entire spindle moves back and forth. So what I want to do is bring that spindle in just to where my, my roller's at the edge of the wheel. And the, the spindle operation is actually intuitive in the fact that pressing the diameter right uh, moves the spindle right, pressing it left moves it left. So it's very easy to pick up. So once I have my roller kind of at, right at the rim edge, I'll bring it down. And as you can see, as soon as that roller got clear of the edge of the wheel, it indented. A couple bumps down on the roller, and I've got my bead broken. Two very important things to remember on bead breaking with rollers is indention and rotation. Same process for the lower bead. The two main things you want to remember on bead breaking with rollers is indention and rotation. Now here's where I want to start tracking my TPMS as I'm bringing my head down. Um, if you do happen to forget, there's a nice little decal right here that indicates the, the recommended TPMS position for each stage of the process. But essentially, you always want the, uh, the TPMS sensor clocked sort toward the operator's position. So I'll bring this tool head down. Again, give it just a little bit of rotation while I'm coming down with that head. What you want to make sure that to do, though, is not rotate when you're pulling, pulling that head up and out to, uh, to, to remove the bead. There's, again, a decal right here to remind you of that. There's really no need to rotate anyway while you're pulling, uh, pulling the bead up and over the, the edge of the wheel. So once I pull my bead up, I've got my, my bead bundle over the edge of the wheel. I can go ahead and start to rotate. That variable speed helps me take that tension off really slowly. Uh, once that tension's off, I can go ahead and rotate fast. That bottom bead needs to stay in that drop center while the lower roller's bringing it up. So. I'll hold it in the drop center, come up with my lower roller, just such that I have a little bit of a gap here. Again, my bead bundle, clear the wheel, and start to rotate. And that essentially just pushes that bead bundle right off. Now here's a, a great time-saving feature. It has a memory function for the tool head height. So I've set this tool head height memory previously, and it's, it's stored that position. So I can store any position here vertically and recall that position any time I want. So if I'm doing a two, three, four tire changeover, that saves me some steps in the fact that I don't have to constantly set that head height again. Now the top bead, the, the critical thing to, to remember on the top bead mount is just to make sure that the top bead stays in the drop center uh, as it's rotating around. You'll see a lot of tires try to bead up there, and you can't, obviously you can't stretch a bead bundle. So some people will use their fists there to, to keep that in the drop center. I prefer to use the, uh, the powered press arm. Just give it some rotation. Mount that top bead. Now inflation is done via pedal here. There's a two-stage pedal down here at my right. So the first stage of the pedal will just push air out of the chuck. The second stage of the pedal is actually blast inflation. So if I had a tire with a particularly uh, large gap here that I needed to take up, I could use this, this blast nozzle and actually place that blast nozzle against the wheel and activate the second stage of that pedal to blast air out. Um, I don't need to on this tire, obviously, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and fill. It's important to remember also that uh, never ever exceed 40 psi when you're seeding the beads. Um, if you get to 40 psi and the beads aren't seated yet and you need extra pressure, that, that needs to be done in the cage. Alright, just like that, I've got this tire demounted and mounted. Quick clamp comes off really easy with a push in and a quarter turn counterclockwise. Lift it right off. Take on over to balance. Alright, so let's go over some more advanced operation procedures on this, this noticeably more difficult wheel. It's worth mentioning a few things about drop center identification. A few ways to identify a reverse drop center wheel is first off just the size. This is actually a, a 26 inch wheel. Wheels 
24 inches and above are typically always reverse drop center. You can look at the valve stem position. The valve stem is, is located way down inside the barrel here. It's not out toward the edge of the outside face. And then the other way really is just to flip the tire around and look at the inside here. You can actually see the drops in here on the inside of the wheel. So we'll need to clamp this wheel upside down on the platen, which is okay, because I can just put my platen protector down, uh, which is rubber, and protect the front face of that wheel. Um, some wheels might warrant a, uh, a flange plate to clamp upside down. This particular one does not. And I've got plastic rollers all along my wheel lift. Again, all I need to do is basically make sure that I, I line that traction pin up with one of the lug holes and then clamp normally. Give the tire just a little bit of a shake to kind of help center it and, uh, and clamp all at once. And I'm ready to break my beads. Again, setting the roller position is the same. I just want to set that roller position right at the edge of the wheel. Come down. An indent as I'm coming down happens automatically as I bead break. Now here's where I do want to maybe bump down just a little bit lower on that roller and give it some bead lube. Now, this is going to help these really tight tires to, uh, to demount. There's really not a time penalty for it anyway because you're your, your bead breaking uh, while rotating anyway. Let's just give a little lubrication there. It'll take a lot of the, a lot of the tension off of these, these tight, tight beads. All right, now here's a situation where I might need to employ some different techniques here. I need to make a gap for my, my tool head. The tool head might, on these, in these really skinny tires, might have a tendency to want to to drop off the back of the tire or off the front of the wheel. So if I need to make a gap, I can bring my roller down and make a gap. I can even bring the press arm down and make a gap for that tool head. Give it a little bit of rotation as I'm again bringing that tool head in. Now here's the second step you'll need to pay a little bit more attention and make sure that the opposite end of the bead here, the top bead, uh, it's not mounted up. Um, sometimes these tight tires have a tendency to want to mount themselves back up. What you'll want to do is take your press arm and just come on around and just press that bead into the drop center. And once you have that bead pulling in the drop center all the way around, you go ahead and pull the head up. So I'll bump up a little bit with my lower roller to actually kind of help that top bead demount a little bit. It takes a little bit of stress off the head while the head is pulling up essentially that lower roller is helping push it up. And you can actually see it take some of the stress off. See the bead start to pull off. Again I've got that nice variable speed that I can move slow or fast if I want. Bottom bead demount again with the roller. That the, the key point is just to make sure that the, the opposite end of the bottom bead stays in the drop center. Now here on this particular tire on this really skinny sidewall I'm actually going to indent that lower roller before I start to rotate for my D-mount. That's just to make sure that I don't start to bunch up that really skinny sidewall. Give a little bit of bead lube here. And again, I've got a memory position set here. I don't need to, uh, that's a step I don't need to do as an operator. I can set it once and uh, have it set for each of that same wheel size. Bottom bead mount's typically pretty easy. The top bead mount can be a little tricky on these really, really tight beads, these really skinny sidewalls. So I want to make sure I keep that bead tracking over under the mount head. And I'll use my, my upper roller actually to do that as sort of a third press device. If I, want. I also bring my bead press over, start to rotate, and just watch. I can rotate slowly, again use that variable speed, and just make sure as I'm rotating that my bead is not, not starting to mount up. I can do a double tap on my indent buttons to clear the tools. Inflation is standard, it's the same. I don't need blast on this particular tire. Um, but again, uh, anything in excess of 40 PSI to seat the beads, you're going to need to use a, uh, an inflation cage. So just like that, I mean, without really any issue at all, I've got this, this fairly difficult assembly changed with absolutely 
no issues at all. So let's talk about an alternate way to clamp this reverse wheel. I can use the flange plate. Now I got my flange plate here configured for five lugs. So all I need to do is line this each stud up with one of the lug holes in the wheel. The flange plate comes with these little thumb screws that I can thread in from the back side. And all those do is hold the flange plate to the wheel while I'm positioning everything. So I don't necessarily need to insert all five. And again, I'll need to clamp this upside down. One thing I want to kind of take note of is where my traction pin is on my platen to make sure that I line that traction pin up with the hole in the flange plate. Again, you use that nice pick and place wheel lift to, uh, to do the heavy lifting for me. Drop that down into position and clamp from the back side now as you normally would with a little bit of a shake here to center everything up. And I can go ahead and change this tire now using the normal procedure.